What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me uh, preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment. The death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on our cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If, repent means to truly turn to God, to give your life to him, to make that move, to turn from your sins and turn to him, turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your love to Jesus today. Now let's get into Deuteronomy 31. Hallelujah. And uh, the title here in the NASB is Moses' Last Counsel. So Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I am no longer able to come and go. And Yahuwah has said to me, You shall not cross this Jordan. It is Yahuwah your God who will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who cr will cross ahead of you, just as Yahuwah has spoken. Yahuwah will do to them just as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites and their land when he destroyed them. Yahuwah will deliver them up to you, or up before you, and you shall do to them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For Yahuwah your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. And i got to repeat that verse right there. That's amazing. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For Yahuwah, your God, is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land which Yahuwah has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. Yahuwah is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. One more time with that. Yahuwah, the Lord, is the one who goes ahead, goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, and to all the elders of Israel, then Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the time of the year of remission of debts, the Sabbath year, at the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, when all Israel comes to appear before Yahuwah your God, at the place which he will choose, you shall read this law in front of all Israel in their hearing. So every uh, seven years, at the Feast of Tabernacles, the priests were to, lead, were to read the book of Deuteronomy to all the people. Assemble the people, the men and the women and the children and the alien who is in your town, so that they may hear and learn and fear Yahuwah your God, and be careful to observe all the words of this law. Their children who have not known will hear and learn to fear Yahuwah your God, as long as you live on the land which you are about to cross the Jordan, Jordan to possess. Then Yahuwah said to Moses, Behold, the time for you to die is near. Call Joshua, 
and present yourselves at the tent of meeting that I may commit that I may commission him. So Moses and Joshua went and present him, pre presented themselves at the tent of meeting, the tabernacle. Yahuwah appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood at the doorway of the tent. And this was, uh, I believe this was Jesus, who was in the pillar, who was the angel of the Lord in the pillar, uh, the pillar of cloud and in the fire. The same pillar of cloud and fire that led them throughout the wilderness and out of Egypt. Yahuwah appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood at the doorway of the tent. Yahuwah said to Moses, Behold, you are about to lie down with your fathers, and this people will arise and play the harlot with the strange gods of the land into the midst of where they are going and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger will be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them and hide my face from them. And they will be consumed, and many evils and troubles will come upon them, so that they will say in that day, is it not because our God is not among us that all these evils have come upon us? But I will surely hide my face in that day because of all the evil they will do, for they will turn to other gods. We need to fear God. We need to keep his commandments. Yes, this was to the Israelites. This was the old covenant. But in the same way, we need to fear God. We need to keep his commandments. That's not what saves us. It's by God, God's grace that we're saved through faith. But if we have faith, we're going to keep his commandments. And he can do the same thing. He can hide his face from us as well. He can allow our, our enemies to do whatever. If we're rebellious against him and disobey him. He might just uh, remove his protection, at least for a short period of time. We need to follow him. We need to keep his commandments. This is very important. Now, therefore, write this song for yourselves and teach it to the sons of Israel. Put it on their lips so that this song may be a witness for me against the sons of Israel. For when I bring them into, into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to their fathers, and they have eaten and are satisfied... And become prosperous. Then they will turn to other gods and serve them. And spurn me and break my covenant. Then it shall come about when many evils and troubles have come upon them. And let me just say this. The beginning of this chapter starts with. Uh, let me go back and read it specifically. Read specifically what it says. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For Yahuwah your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. But if we disobey, if we diso that's, that's if we obey God. If we trust in Him and obey Him. But if we go ast astray from Him and deny Him, deny Him with our actions, then we see what will happen. This is for us too. Now therefore, write, for, write this song for yourselves and teach it to the sons of Israel. Put it on their lips so this song may be a witness for me against the sons of Israel. And we're going to go through the song, the song of Moses in the next chapter. For one, I, actually, let me, draw, let me just read this again. Now therefore, write this song for yourselves and teach it to the sons of Israel. Basically, the song of God. Uh, put it on the lips so this song may be a witness for me against the sons of Israel. For when I bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to their fathers, and they have eaten and are satisfied and become prosperous, then they will turn to other gods and, ser to, and serve them and spurn me and break my covenant. Then it shall come about, when many evils and troubles have come upon them, that this song will testify before them as a witness. For it, for it shall not be forgotten from the lips of their descendants. For I know their intent which they are developing today, before I have brought them into the land which I swore. So Moses wrote, wrote this song the same day and taught it to the sons of Israel. Then he commissioned Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. 
Hallelujah. It came about when Moses finished writing the words of this law in a book until they were complete, that Moses commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, saying, Place this book of the take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah your God, that it rem may remain there as a witness against you. So the book of Deuteronomy, the book of the law, I don't know if it was, I, I'm, I think my current understanding is that it was just what is written here in Deuteronomy. Uh, but it's possible it was, uh, I don't know if it included any Leviticus or anything like that or not. Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah your God. That it may remain there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stubbornness. Behold, while I am still alive with you today, you have been rebellious against Yahuwah. How much more than after my death? Assemble to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak, this, that I may speak these words in their hearing. And call the heavens and the earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will act corruptly and turn from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will, will befall you in the latter days. And, no, we're in the latter days now. These are also prophecies. For you will do that, that which is evil in the, in the sight of Yahuwah, provoking him to anger with the work of your hands. Then Moses spoke in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel, the words of this song, until they were complete. And that's the end of Deuteronomy 31. We're going to get into, Lord willing, get into chapter 32 tomorrow. Sorry, I missed it yesterday. Um, I'm not going to make an excuse why. Uh, I'm just in the process of trying to get my car my car fixed. And I just did, I guess. Um, but I... But God let me just uh, uh, continue working last night and and get to the study today. Um, but like I said, I would like to catch up, catch up, uh, do multiple studies a day, and be able to finish the rest of the Bible by uh, at least by Pentecost, um, if not by Passover in the spring. Lord willing, we will see. Uh, today is. Tuesday the 23rd, this Sunday is the first day of Hanukkah. Um, for anybody who observes or celebrates Hanukkah, I, uh, you know, I don't really do anything for Hanukkah. It is biblical if you consider uh, Second Macca Maccabees to be a part of the Bible, which it, it is in some Bibles, as in, in the Apocrypha. It was in the 1611 King James Version. It's in uh, a lot of Bibles. And that's where Hanukkah comes from. But uh, it's not one of God's feast days. But it is uh, biblical, technically. But uh, I haven't done really anything to observe it. But starting last year, uh, I have a lot of nieces and nephews. And um, due to me not celebrating Christmas anymore over the past couple years... Uh, starting last year, I decided to uh, give them gifts for Hanukkah, like a little uh, Dollar Tree gift every day for uh, for the eight days of Hanukkah, and uh, you know, makes them happy. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of Deuteronomy 31, brothers and sisters. Let's stay strong in faith. Let's trust in God. If we obey Him, we have faith. That he's going to deliver us no matter what. But if we disobey him. We need to fear. What he can do to us. And what he may allow to happen to us. But if we obey him. We stay strong in faith. And keep his commandments. There's no reason that he won't. We just need to continue trusting in him. We need to continue following him. And serving him with all our heart. Let's be ready for the return of the Lord. There's not much time left. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Turn to him. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent and believe the gospel. That's the end of Deuteronomy 31. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.